creation groans for the revealing of the sons of God. His holy invasion for a righteous revolution forged in his fire. Weaponized for warfare, roaring in his rest, and dancing in his reign. Hello, hello, Sim family. I am back and I am so excited about what the Lord is going to release to us tonight. I'm Kelly Marie. For those of you that might be new viewers, to my YouTube channel or Facebook community, I want to just extend a warm welcome and let you know that the Cimarron tribe is all about the wild nature of the Spirit of Christ, the wild nature of the Holy Spirit. Cimarron means wild, means pure. Everything that is cultivated by the Spirit of God, not the systems of man, not the hand of man. So I praise God for those of you that are being led by the Holy Spirit to receive the pure outpouring of the Spirit of God, especially if you've suffered spiritual abuse and you have been imprisoned by religious spirits and so forth. I praise God that he is leading you to a place that is safe, where you experience the tangible presence of the Lord and pure revelatory teaching from the word of God, foundational scripture that actually really begins to awaken a deeper hunger and thirst for righteousness, a deeper hunger and thirst for the way of the Holy Spirit. And also in this ministry, it is all about bringing you to a deeper place of intimacy with the Lord, beginning to, to stoke those embers in your heart, to begin to reignite your passion for Christ, your passion for the what he's called you to do in the kingdom. So I want to give you guys a warm welcome and tell you that um, tonight is going to be our last very lengthy two to two and a half hour broadcast. For those of you who have heard what I've spoken about uh, in the previous week is that the Lord said that this ministry is going through a shedding process and we have finally made it, you guys. The word of the Lord is it is your shedding season. It is a wild shedding season from the spirit of God in our lives that means it's glorious what the Lord is causing to just completely be cast off and far removed from us. Glory to God. So tonight we're going to be diving in to this amazing word from God that is going to edify you, that is going to bring healing, that is going to bring restoration, that is going to, again, just rekindle your passion for your calling, for your, your relationship with Christ. Those things that have weighed you down, God is causing those things to shed off of you. So there's some really beautiful and powerful revelation that I'm going to give, as well as some awesome foundational scriptures about what it means to be naked, yet completely clothed in the presence of God, clothed in his strength clothed in his divine nature. We are clothed. That means we're covered by the blood of Jesus. So we're going to dive deep tonight in this teaching, but I want to let you guys uh, know that this is really important. So I did not make this announcement yet, but I'm going to let you guys know that on February the 7th, my beloved grandma, Rosemary, she went to heaven. She got her wings and she went to heaven on February 7th at 7 a.m. in the morning. And she was so peaceful. My sister got to see her and she was smiling and she was so peaceful when she transitioned and passed on into glory. And so uh, we have been 
really in our, you know, our time of grieving, just because it's a, it's, it's a moment, you know, how it is with family when that person, no matter how you rejoice that they're in heaven, my goodness, it's the best place to be, but you also have all these memories that just flood your heart in a moment because it hits, it hits hard. And so I had that experience and uh, my family and I, uh, we've been just, you know, comforting one another and the Lord has opened the door, opened the door for me to fly home. Uh, I've got to fly home um, tomorrow in the, let's see, tomorrow at noon. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm actually going to be flying to Portland, Oregon tomorrow to meet my sister at the airport. And um, I'm so thankful. I know the Lord wants me to be with my family to have this special time uh, with each other. And I believe there's something really special that the Lord is going to do and the healing that my family needs. And, and so things from the past as well. It's amazing the healing and restoration that takes place when, when something like this happens, you know, uh, God begins to bring forth a new life. God begins begins to birth something beautiful and new. So I just wanted you guys to know that, uh, yes, uh, my my beautiful grandma, you guys know, I've talked about her before. Um, she just was such an incredible grandmother, filled my childhood with so much joy, so much adventure. I have so many stories. Matter of fact, we're all probably going to tell so many stories about our memories with grandma rose and she was just an incredible storyteller matter of fact she even went to uh, an elementary school where she read she read to the the elementary students and they just adored her god gifted her to just tell stories and i think i get that from my grandma rose as well so just wanted to give you that um quick update that i will be flying out tomorrow and what i plan on doing is getting a pre-recording for you guys for friday because you know we just things happen life happens and we've got to reschedule so i i am going to be um getting something uh together for you for uh this friday so that you guys will be able to have uh some experience with some soaking and some worship um that i'll have uploaded for you that will go live on friday okay um and what else was i going to say Thank you, Jesus. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So uh, instead of having the lengthy broadcast that I normally do all the deep teaching and the deep dives with, you know, the, the spirit of God is that I'm actually uh, creating a space and building a space that is going to be an online school. And there's going to be courses that are going to be made available for those of you that really want to do those deep dives. And then what I'll be doing is short broadcasts with words of encouragement, um, uploading videos with what the Lord wants me to release, whatever prophetic word God wants you to, to receive, to just strengthen you and edify you and encourage you on your faith walk and your journey with the Lord. Um, or dreams and visions. So I will be uploading short videos. I think it's going to be so much better for so many of you. So just know that. And uh, so we're going to, this is going to be amazing. And I thank you guys for those of you that joined in yesterday. Just remember, um, it's going to be every Sunday that we do our prayer and intercession night. Now, I will be in Oregon this Sunday. So I'm actually going to be flying home on sunday i think it'll, it'll be around 2 p.m so we'll see we'll see if i'm going to be able to make it in time to do prayer and intercession but just giving you a heads up um the lord needs me to be home with my family at this time so but if you were here um last night i just praise god for how the lord did move and i really pray that those of you that came and presented your prayer request to the lord before him on his altar. I just praise God that the Lord really moved upon you. The Holy Spirit began to move. I pray that those of you that were um, battling colds and any kind of sickness really felt tangible healing from the Lord. And I'm expecting uh, amazing testimonies to come forth. And um, so, and then also you guys, you know, just to know that again, I will be actually doing it in advance. You'll actually see the stream that will be uh, scheduled a week in advance for our Sunday prayer and intercession night. Okay. Last night we, 
we did um, a, a foundational type of, of launch dealing with the richness of prayer and presenting our heart on the altar before the Lord. So that was, that was awesome. Oh, praise God. Okay. Lori, Laura. Okay. You're feeling better today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, we are going to jump in. We're going to get into this because let me tell you, boy, I had to crucify my flesh because I've got to get several things done before I drive to the airport. I got to drive an hour to Nashville and uh, catch my flight tomorrow. So, so my wheels have been spinning like, oh, what do I got to get done before I fly out? And then I'm flying back home, like I said, in about four days. So, but we are diving in. We are diving in. Okay. You guys, this, okay, so let, let we're going to start out by sharing with you again that during a, dur it was actually during last Passover, okay? So the last Passover, I began to have this moment with Jesus, and I'll never forget it. The Lord just stood before me, and he said, meet me at the shed, meet me at the shed, and it was this moment in the presence of God that he was speaking about this, this shedding uh, that we are stepping into. And there are so many layers of revelation that we're going to dive into as I'm gonna, and I'm going to go through this with you guys tonight because it's powerful. But the song of the Lord came forth. So Passover, God was speaking, but the song of the Lord had come forth. And I remember the Lord was singing out and he said, a new nakedness, a new nakedness to dive deeper into my heart, a new nakedness to dive deeper into my heart. And the Lord even began to sing out. I'm lifting the weight off. I'm lifting the weight off from the long wait. OK, so we know what that means. That when we've got to wait on God for something that is strategic, that will only come by the Holy Spirit in what God has promised, because what God has promised is to serve the nations. When God gives a promise and there's a long wait to see the fulfillment of that promise, it is because of the weightiness of the glory of God that is going to reach the nations. So in other words, if God says to us, that his glory comes out of long suffering. That is the purpose of the long wait. So the song of the Lord, Jesus began to sing. And he said, I'm lifting off the weight from the long wait. I'm lifting off the weight for the weight of my glory to come. So God was saying that there's so much that God is removing off of us and removing out of our lives that has been that has been a heavy weight, you know, and and even the struggles, even the things that we've had to go through for the purpose of getting us in shape to handle our calling and the way that God was mantling us. So the Lord said, I'm lifting off the weight because now the weight of my glory is coming. And it was really powerful. And in that moment, in the presence of God, he said, there's a new nakedness, like Adam and Eve, a new nakedness. And so we're going to dive into this because that's why the Lord talked about this intense shedding. And this shedding is what the Lord said. It's wild. Okay. It is wild. And so even tonight, we're going to see something pretty wild. I found it humorous because the Lord led me uh, to, you know, that whole understanding of molting, right? That word molting is another word for shedding, but the word molting is intense because it's like how a snake or a lizard, like these reptiles, how when they shed, they shed, it's like, it's like the their entire body is like all this. They're coming out of their skin. So a snake comes out of its skin. Uh, a, a grasshopper, right? The molting, it comes right out of It's like coming out of its shell. The entire body and everything where, where that, you know, that that insect or that that uh, reptile or that crab 
it says that, you know, they they have a hard shell on the outside. Their skeleton is on the outside and they're to protect their soft tissue on the inside. And so this is amazing. And so I'm going to go through this and thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me get the fullness out tonight. So it says that, again, these reptiles like lizards and snakes and then these insects. And but we're going to watch a crab because this is going to be fascinating. But it says their skeleton, their skeletal, their skeleton, their bones, you know, it's like their armor that protects their tissue is on the outside, whereas us humans, our skeleton is on the inside, not on the outside. That's interesting. And so it says that when that insect or that snake or that reptile or that crab is growing, it has to come out of its skin. It has to literally come out of its shell and it forms something new because the thing is that because of the the skeleton on the outside it can't expand it can't it, it can't expand on the inside and so that's why they go through this intense molting process and they literally come out of their entire shell their entire body it's 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 wild it is i mean it's it's wild and so as i was watching this i was like man lord okay i hear the revelation I hear the revelation and we know the scripture about what, like getting rid of the old wine skin, right? So that we can partake of the new wine skin and, and, and what that means, you know, and that is full surrender to the Lord and complete nakedness before him. And so, because God has to get rid of a lot of stuff. And so this this is amazing to me so i'm i'm gonna see if the holy spirit wants me to kind of go a little backwards on this teaching since he had me talk about this crab and the lord's <laughs> and the okay i think we're gonna do that i think we're gonna do that because i'm just so stirred tonight i got so much going on so guys thank you for praying for me that i can get this out fully completely get this word out tonight okay First of all, let me say this. Shedding is about removing what is dead. We shed what is dead. What no longer serves us, what is no longer good for us. Listen, there's no life in it. There, there's nothing that it that is beneficial. So we got to let it go. We got to get rid of it, okay? Because of the way that we're growing. And, and there's so much change that's taking place that those things got to go. They got to go. So we shed what is dead, right? Okay. So I'm going to go through this, and this is what the Lord was saying, okay? We are shedding off weight, both spiritually and physically, to embrace the weightiness of his glory that is coming like the latter rain, the heavy rain, which comes in the spring, that does what? The heavy rain comes and causes wild growth. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So, so the first thing I want to talk about is this. We are shedding off weight, both spiritual and physical. Okay. Whatever heaviness, whatever Heaviness came from discouragement, from disappointment, from misunderstandings, kind of like things that you experienced because maybe you might have misunderstood what God was saying about what he's purposed for that specific season. And so if we misunderstand and we're not hearing clearly what the Lord is saying for that specific season, we can absolutely go through an unnecessary battle. Believe me, I have been there. My goodness. Come on, how many of you can talk about it where somebody, maybe you trusted a prophetic voice and they were operating out of their soulish realm because they had so much zeal and passion and they weren't tempered by the Lord. Okay, they weren't tempered. And all of a sudden, they're in this place of excitement and they're jumping the gun, so to speak. 
and they're wanting to tell you something and it's actually not the timing of the Lord. And so you're trusting what a prophetic voice is saying and they're a beautiful person, but they're, they're not really mature and they're gifting yet. Okay. They're excited, but they're, they're not fully, they're not fully sharp when it comes to discerning, right? The times and seasons of the Lord or how to minister specific things. And so you can be absolutely uh, greatly impacted in a not so good way, right? Because then all of a sudden you get so excited and then you're not gaining the true understanding or the counsel that you need from the spirit of God himself. And so all of a sudden you think the enemy, you think the enemy's causing delay. Come on, I'm going to talk about this. This is serious. So if a prophetic voice is not discerning and they speak out of out of season, then all of a sudden you get tripped up by the enemy. That deception, that spirit of deception is moving and operating and you and it literally wants to exhaust you because you think that because something is not happening the way that it was said to you, that it's the enemy and it's not the enemy, but you just literally stepped out of season or went a direction that the spirit of God wasn't leading you. Oh my God. So, so thank you, Lord. We've all experienced it. Have we not? It's even also a part of our training. It's also a part of our grooming. We have to go through it so that we are sensitive, right? To the timing and season of the Lord. So we don't all go out there and say, oh, just I take authority over the spirit of delay. Okay. When God wants to do something, you better, I'm going to say it like my grandpa, you, you bet your bippy that it's going to happen. If God wants something to be fulfilled, ain't nothing going to get in his way. It is going to happen. It is going to happen the way he wants it to happen, especially when you have a covenant with him and your heart is in a good place with God and you might be moving in the wrong direction. He knows how to get a hold of you. He knows how to speak to you. He knows how to encounter you. So I'm going to just break some stuff off. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of you need to shed some of this off. Some of you need, okay, come on. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to just decree tonight that shedding off of you, that, that, that deception of the enemy is being removed off of you in the name of Jesus. The enemy is not going to be able to bring confusion or torment your mind because he wants you to believe, oh, I'm just delaying. I'm just delaying. I'm just, and then you know what it does? He gets you to exhaust yourself and you step into an unnecessary spiritual warfare when God wants you to be in rest because God wants to show you something that is about to begin to take root and begin to break out of the ground, so to speak, from the soil of your heart. He wants to bless something and the enemy wants to put your mind on something that is not ready to be birthed. So his tactic is to exhaust us, right? And so you go into that unnecessary warfare and that was the agenda of the enemy. Okay. I'm seeing comments. I praise God, right? We got to understand, okay? The enemy is cunning. He's a trickster. So the enemy will even, uh, his device that he forms against you is going to get you to believe that, uh, to get you to actually go into an unnecessary warfare to literally exhaust you so that you're not discerning what God is actually wanting to do and where God wants to prosper and flourish you, flour cause things to flourish in your life. And we're, we're focused on something that it's not time for that to bloom or blossom. We've all experienced it. Okay. Wow, the Holy Spirit wants to talk about this. Thank you, Jesus. So right now, Lord, we thank you. 
every okay i'm gonna say it like this i mean it i'm gonna say it like this because this is the truth okay every false teaching okay any man-made doctrine or false teaching concerning this spirit of delay lord that you shed it off that assignment that gets us to not embrace what it is that we really need to see within ourselves what it is that we really need to see where your hand is moving where your spirit is moving and brooding and the things that you are ready to prosper and you are ready to birth thank you god right now those that have suffered a spirit of exhaustion i mean where the enemy exhausted you in this area lord i just ask right now that you pour out your spirit and you just bring such just 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 such a a sweet outpouring just just remove that residue remove that heaviness in that residue in that area if that's you just say praise god right we're done with that that's shedding off of your life you're going to be so in tune i decree in the name of jesus that a deeper season of intimacy with the lord is going to cause you to be so in tune with the time and season of the lord for your life that you are going to recognize the areas that god wants to move and that god wants to prosper your life and that god wants to bring blessing and favor you're going to recognize where the holy spirit's brooding in that area and you are not going to fall prey to those tactics and devices of the enemy in jesus name all right so that's shedding that's being removed that's dead that's dead weight dead weight okay where we go in holy spirit so again god said look that we're shedding weight spiritually and physically and a lot of times the weight that spiritual that heaviness that heaviness whether it's a demonic oppression or a deep oppression or a depression it can absolutely cause us to become emotional eaters because we're feasting on the wrong thing we're feasting on the wrong thing and that's a tactic of the enemy too my goodness because he knows he wants to get our body out of shape and just weak so we have no energy we're depleted but in the name of jesus lord i thank you lord i thank you and praise you tonight that you are absolutely you are tearing down every demonic device of the enemy that caused such heaviness weariness any type of demonic oppression that or any type of demonic depression that came upon your people that caused them to to step into that place where they became emotional eaters and they they gained weight that they never thought they would gain in their life lord i thank you right now that all that weight in the spiritual realm is being dismantled and lord that you're giving them a fresh stamina and strength and vigor to absolutely shed that weight that came out of emotional pain emotional pain in the name of jesus and lord god that you're going to shed your light in that area in their heart in that area god where they weren't able to see because the enemy was trying to hide it and and suppress it and cover it up and conceal it so lord i give you glory now in the name of jesus that you're shedding your light in this area where there has been emotional pain and also a hunger that they weren't recognizing a hunger for change a hunger for change and the enemy was trying to tell them nothing's going to change nothing's going to change but i praise you god that you are tearing down every foul venomous lie and deception of the enemy god and that they know by your spirit the winds of change 
are blowing. The winds of change are blowing. And as your winds of change are blowing, they feel the excitement in their spirit, man. And God, you are reviving and rekindling that hunger to feast on your word, to feast on your word. And Lord God, they're not being enticed by the enemy to feast on comfort foods or things that are depleting them physically in their body, that are draining them physically in their body in the name of Jesus. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm going to pause there and you guys comment and let me know. Let me know if that's you. Say, man, I got so weighed down because I was starting to literally believe and entertain the lies of the enemy without realizing it and starting to believe that nothing's going to change. No, the winds of change are blowing. The winds of change are blowing. Mm. The winds of change are blowing, okay? God's taking several of you, including me. We're going into the changing room with the bridegroom. Oh, yes, we are. We're going into the changing room with the bridegroom. And he's saying, you're going to shed that off. You're going to shed that off, okay? No, you're not going to you're not gonna live like this anymore. The life that, life as you've known it, is coming to an end because I'm bringing great change in your life and you're not even going to recognize. You've been so used to adjusting and adapting to that environment that seemed like a never-ending story, but I told you that you were coming out of never land and entering into your promised land. Oh, Oh boy, there we go. Did you hear that? Take a hold of that right now. Some of you remember when God had me prophesy that about a year and a half or two years ago. He's bringing it back and he's saying, you know what? You're shedding what's dead. You're coming out of the never land where the enemy was lying to you saying, well, this is never going to change. You're never going to experience that. That's never going to happen for you. Oh, God said, you're coming out of Neverland, stepping into the land that I promised you. And I'm not saying that to you to sugarcoat anything. It ain't a feel-good message. It's the truth. It is the truth. A lot of things. It is the Kairos time of the king. And it's because of souls. Because of salvation and true deliverance, a ministry of reconciliation, is because of what God desires to do through your life for his glory. And so you had to wait, 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 wait. And that's a big thing that attacks the remnant, isn't it? The long suffering, the long wait gets us to be lured in by the enemy to say, well, that ain't never happening. Just accept it. Go a different direction. But God is saying this to you. So what's happening is you are shedding that heavy weight. Those lies of the enemy that really weighed heavy on your heart. Even the areas that you got angry at God because it was like, man, this really looks like truth. I haven't seen you do anything for years, God. Come on. So I want you to type this out. I want you to type this out and I'm going to continue to read, but I'm going to do something. Uh, I'm going to put on some background music, guys, while we, we're going to we're going to flow and I'm going to continue to just release this word. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to type this out. OK, if you truly believe it, I want you to act upon that and say, I am leaving never land and I am entering my promised land. What God remember, Jesus is our promised land. 
but there's a land that he promised us in the earth for his glory. Okay. So you're leaving that never land to promised land. Okay. You're shedding. That's what shedding you're getting rid of that, that mindset, all that stuff, everything that you got used to in that never land. My God, God is getting rid of all of it. The old habits, the, the bad habits, the things that were cultivated in that never land. My God, hey, she cut out of Bahia. Come on, this is serious. I hear the Holy Spirit. Those things that the enemy wanted to cultivate in your life in that never land that was painful where he wanted to torment your heart where he wanted to taunt you and bully you and mock the spirit of god in your life okay here we go thank you jesus you guys give me one second i'm going to do this i'm going to pull this up and put on some instrumental music here Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Let me see what we got. I'm going to put on. We're going to put this one on. Oh, yeah. Courage. I like that one. Okay. Let's play this one. Okay. I think I have it on repeat. Yes, I do. All right. Here we go. Okay, let me make sure this is on stereo, guys. Hold on. Let's see if this is on stereo. No, it's not. There we go. Oh, glory. Okay. Let's talk about this for just a minute because you know what? Jesus cares. He cares about everything in our heart. He cares about what causes us pain in suffering so i want to say this again that the lord knows where the enemy wanted you to give up the lord knows where you started moving into past habits all those things that because it was just it was it was a it was something familiar that would help you to kind of become numb, right? Kind of numb in that area where you're just like, I'd rather just don't want to feel anything. And I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to just go through the motions because nothing's changing. It hasn't changed for 10 years. It hasn't changed for 20 years. And so God knows those things that were cultivated in your life even in your heart and i see jesus coming and he is literally he is literally removing those things that the enemy so so uh you know like like so cunningly and so sly like a fox was really luring you into but do you know that in a moment in a moment, glory to God, that anything can change. The moment that the Lord begins to pour out his spirit, man, he can radically shift those things in a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, this is not, this is not what I wanted, guys. I'm sorry. Hold on. That is not, that is not what I was looking for. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Got to get something that I feel really connected to in my spirit. Okay. So, let me say it this way. Holy Spirit, thank you for helping me. Habits that we cultivated in our never land. Yeah? The Holy Spirit is coming and pouring out pouring out god's 
love, his, his presence. Listen, and there's a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is helping us shed, shed those habits that got cultivated in that, in our Neverland. That was our mindset. And so, isn't it amazing how the Lord knows when to send his rain? The Lord knows. He comes with, he comes with fire and he comes with rain. And, and it's amazing because God is saying he is going to consume those things that were absolutely a weighty, it was like just weighing down on our hearts, weighing down on us. And let me say this, this is so important. Don't you dare listen to the lie of the enemy to say, you know what? I'm 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 past my prime. I'm past my prime. I just gotta accept kind of where I'm at. It's okay. Listen. If if an 80-year-old woman or a set uh, or a 90-year-old man can be fit and working out in the gym, then okay, then there is all that other stuff is a lie. It's nonsense. If we if we can cultivate these kind of unhealthy habits in our neverland, think about what we can cultivate in our promised land. Think about how quickly things will begin to move and change as the Spirit of God begins to, to move. And that's what He's doing. The winds of change are blowing and God is going to help us. God is going to move in mighty ways. And you know, the things that you are, you're used to putting in your mouth, things that you're used to eating, or putting your focus on. As the Holy Spirit begins to move upon you, all of a sudden you're gonna say, you know what, I don't even like that. I don't, I don't acquire the taste for that anymore. I don't desire that anymore. See, that's the, that's the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that says, hey, my winds have changed are blowing and I'm gonna remove those things that were cultivated in your Neverland out of pain out of frustration okay all right so then we're gonna go to shedding off this is a this is a serious one and many of you have really been experiencing this shedding off speaking the language of the soul and really coming into a place in the spirit and your journey with the Lord, in your intimacy with the Lord, speaking the language of heaven. Coming out of that, speaking the language of, of, of the soulish realm. I mean, God is gonna cause that to shed off of you. And you're gonna begin to speak the language of heaven. And for some of you, I hear the Holy Spirit, for those of you that have really been praying for the baptism of tongues of fire. It's coming. It is coming. Let me tell you something. God reminded me of the man who was the man that ended up, and I I think, what was his name, Lord William, with the Azusa Street Revival? That man was sent by God to teach on the baptism of tongues of fire when he hadn't even received it yet. But his calling, God was telling him to step out and teach about the, the, the outpouring and the baptism by fire in the book of Acts. And he went through persecution. Cause like, how are you gonna teach on something that you don't even walk in? And some of you, that's gonna bear witness to your spirit because God, knows what it takes to stretch our faith and to get us to fully surrender and let go. Sometimes that isn't going to happen because God has to get rid of that fear of man. Oh my God, I'm going to look so foolish to people. What are people going to think? So thank you, Jesus, for those that are literally in this coming season going to really receive that fresh baptism by fire with tongues of fire whoo 
because of your ministry in their lives, because of the way that you are going to mantle them. Woo! And you, Holy Spirit, are going to disciple them. You are going to move, Holy Spirit, through those tongues of fire. Hallelujah. But also for, for us, even those that we have the tongues of fire, we have the baptism, we're coming into a deeper place. God, our, our language is changing. I know my language is changing. God is, is really taking us deeper and higher. And so the way you speak, you're going to see how the Lord says, if you open your mouth, I'm going to fill it. You're about to experience such a, a renewed language of heaven through the spirit of wisdom and counsel and understanding and knowledge. Your language is shifting. Coming out of the soulish realm and really that language of heaven flowing out of your spirit, man, where you abide with Christ in heavenly places. Thank you, Jesus, for all of us. They're about to experience fresh encounters and things that we're going to experience in dreams and visions. God is going to take hold of us. And he's going to fill our mouth and we're going to speak the language of heaven. Some of you even right now, the Lord is telling me, you're about to experience holy laughter. Holy laughter. That gift of the Holy Spirit is going to be unwrapped within you. You're going to unwrap that gift in the presence of the Lord. And this is going to be a new language of heaven in your life. You're going to see the power of God move. You're going to see strongholds break with that holy laughter of God. The language of heaven. Some of you, I hear the Lord saying, you've been praying. You've been praying. God, I need more joy. I need more joy in my life. So, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are going to clothe them. You're going to clothe them in this way, and they're going to experience the joy of the Lord and release holy laughter that's going to break strongholds. Oh, my goodness. Laughter that's going to bring deliverance. In your life, maybe where you might need it, and in the lives of people that God brings on your path. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. God says we're shedding off any toxic and meaningless relationships that are not aligned with kingdom purpose that keep us in our comfort zones, okay? I'm gonna talk about two, two types. A wild shedding. There are certain relationships that God is saying, I gotta shed, I gotta absolutely remove from your life because of what I'm doing in you. And some of you, you already know it, the Lord's been speaking to you and this is good this is holy so some of you God's already been telling you you might love them but you know what you gotta walk in obedience and the wisdom of God and so he's saying some of you are gonna be shedding off toxic or meaningless relationships they're not fruitful in your life they're not helping you advance and move forward into what God has for you. So you're going to have to, God's going to remove it. And I know sometimes that can be painful, but let me say something. It's very purposeful and the spirit of God will comfort you and give you understanding and revelation and peace when you understand why. Okay, and I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna say this, 
because I'm hearing it. There are those of you, we've all experienced, well, I want to say we've all experienced this, but especially those that have suffered any kind of severe abandonment or any separation anxiety, and I can tell you because I, I experienced it, is that, see, the enemy will want to beat you up and say, well, you know, righteous people stay and do these things for others. And so sometimes the enemy is going to whisper in your ear and you're going to feel like that person's your assignment and they're not. And that person actually that's toxic is draining you and keeping you out of the place that you need to receive from the Father, that you need to grow, that you need to grow and that you need to advance. And so the Lord knows some of you, the enemy's been using you because it's like, oh, I if I just do this, if I just pray this prayer, if I just do this, you know, uh, maybe they'll change. And, and sometimes what happens is you get so pulled into thinking that you're responsible for that change or that deliverance or whatever it is that they need in their lives that the Lord has to say to you, hey, you're not their savior. I am. And then he's got to cut that cord. And some of you, some of these toxic relationships, these specific people, they're very codependent. And they're depending on you because they're used to the way that you treat them. They're depending on you to care for them and to be there for them. And what it's doing is it's causing you to become an idol in their lives. And so they are not in a place where they're learning how to really reach out and cry out to the Lord. Okay? So, some of you right now, God's going to shed those codependent relationships, whether, whether it is those people that have been toxic, that have, they're the codependent, they're depending on you, they want to grab onto your coattail, right? And it's like dead weight, and it's holding you back. Or you may be going through a moment where God wants to bring healing, and he wants to remove that codependency. And he wants to teach you how to fully receive from him. Okay, hallelujah. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now I'll, I want to explain it this way because there are good relationships. Okay, now there are good relationships. And, and what God showed me, I remember because he showed me this years ago, but he brought it back. When a space shuttle is launching into outer space. Once that space shuttle shifts into a new atmosphere, something happens. There is something specific that has to detach and fall off of that space shuttle for it to be able to fully move into that atmosphere, into outer space to go to its destination. And if those things do not detach from that space shuttle. It's dangerous and can even be deadly and can cause uh, that space shuttle to explode. So it's, it's very detrimental that there's a time that certain people, okay, have to detach because they can't go where you're going. They're not a part of that kingdom purpose in your life. And so you've got to really, that's why it's so important that we don't hold on to relationships. That our, our hands and our heart are wide open. We say, well, I'm thankful. I see this person as a gift in my life. But you can't hold on to them. 
And so sometimes God has to wean you like a mother weans a babe from the bosom. Oh, let me say it again. All right. Some of you are, the shedding is like a weaning, okay? And so there are those specific relationships. They're beautiful people, great people, but again, they were seasonal, right? They were seasonal. And like that space shuttle, God's taken you to a deep place. And where you're going, they can't go with you. So we have to be in a place where we're always like not holding on to people. Even though they're amazing, wonderful people, we got to be discernful about where we're going with Jesus, what our kingdom assignment is, what our, 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 where we're being directed by the Spirit of God. I, I want to just stop a minute to see what, how the Lord is ministering to you there. Because see, when, when I'm talking about like that space shuttle that goes into a new atmosphere and it has to detach those things on the side of that shuttle, it's it's exciting. Think about it. Man, they're, they're going into outer space and they get to behold and experience something so breathtaking, so incredible, but they can't do it if those specific things don't detach from the shuttle. Did you hear me? Holy Ghost, I thank you right now that, that this revelation is going deep into your people, into their hearts. See, there are things that God wants you to behold in his presence. There are places that God is drawing you in, like I talk about, the power of the sun that begins to force and pull the earth into its orbit. So the earth has to revolve around the sun, right? And so Christ, the risen sun, the power of the sun, there's a, there's a, a drawing. There's like that, that force field, glory to God. And there is a drawing right now in your life in this season. That's why there's a major shedding happening. Come on, there's a major shedding happening and there are specific relationships and I'm going to say it, ministry relationships. God is saying, listen, I need you to move in this direction because you're about to behold some things in my presence. It's all a part of your destiny. It's all a part of what I've mantled you to do and I need you to go in this direction. So that's why we, we got to be discerning of when relationships are seasonal. Because if we stay in them too long, they can be a hindrance. If there's a seasonal relationship that's meant to be seasonal and you don't move when the Spirit of God is moving or obey the Lord where you need to be, then that seasonal relationship will become a hindrance. So Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you for just right now for how you're speaking and ministering to the hearts of your sons and daughters. And they understand. And there's a joy that this is not something that is sorrowful. But wow, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for relationships that are seasonal and that I celebrate that and that I can move forward and embrace the, the new destiny relationships that you have before me. Kind of like David, right? David, in his journey, he had to move in the direction he was supposed to go because he was anointed to be king of Israel. So... Certain relationships are only for a season. And let me say it this way too. Even mentors, mentors in your life, okay? God and say, hey, these are seasonal. See, because we as human beings, we love to establish family. 
We love to establish family. And you can still, you can still be friends with someone. But let me, and, but let me just, I want to be obedient. Thank you, Lord. There are some people, right? Their purpose is to move and flow in the anointing of the Lord because you need the ministry of the Lord that that has mantled them. But outside of that mantle, it, it goes both ways. It's God, that person is not supposed to be in your friend circle or your family circle, so to speak. Okay? And then there's sometimes where there's a, a seasonal... A relationship where God's training you through someone that's mentoring or discipling you and then all of a sudden it's like okay well that's done you receive what you needed and now you don't need that and now there can be a friendship and not the mentoring or uh, the discipling in a sense so we just have to be discerning and sensitive to how the Holy Spirit's moving in our lives that's important Okay, because if somebody overstays their welcome, they can be a hindrance. Okay, we got we got to be mindful of that. That's why the Lord says, "Don't don't don't hold on to people and relationships." Like because again, they can become an idol, and it'll make you idol because that season's done. It's like, hey, after autumn comes winter and after winter comes spring you see what I'm saying okay all right where are we going Lord where are we going thank you Jesus hallelujah okay something really important that we do know is there's a great shedding off of self-made systems right self-made systems self-made platforms oh self-made structures right so there's a man a great shedding in that area to embrace God's system embracing the systems of heaven so I want to say it this way if we're not surrendered to really receive and what the Holy Spirit is 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 saying to us and how the Holy Spirit is moving right everything has a system we got an ecosystem right there's things the way things operate and function through the laws of creation okay so there are those of you that the Lord is really going to surprise you as you begin to really discover how God's systems operate and move. And it really is a great shaking when you come out of what is self-made or man-made and then you begin to step into what is heavenly, like the systems of heaven, the governing systems in the realms of heaven from the throne of God. So sometimes it can be scary and God has to bring a shaking so that you're liberated and that you're free to move and function and operate with the divine nature of God. There's a lot of stuff, man, that is just dead. Dead. That's why the Lord talks about dead churches because it's not the system of heaven right it's not the orchestration or operation of the Holy Spirit and so we shed what is dead we shed what is dead Woo! okay thank you Lord okay I love this one Shedding of paradigms, the paradigms of man, to embrace the paradise of heaven. We're shedding the paradigms of man to embrace the paradise of heaven. Okay? Also, shedding off soulish dreams to embrace God's dreams. 
Oh my goodness. There's nothing more joyful and exciting the moment we discover that God's dream is awakened in our hearts. That we get to dream with God. We get to co-create with God. So there's a shedding that's happening where an soulish these soulish dreams come out of these self-made systems. There's nothing more captivating than to run through the Father's field of dreams in heaven. How many of you have ever experienced that? I want to stop there. Oh my goodness. I remember having these encounters where I was standing by the Father and He was moving His hand like this and there was a huge field. Man, and it was full of life and it was full of color and it was like the colors of the rainbow and I could just feel so much joy and the Lord began to show me where I was meant to run 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 through his field of dreams oh my god there's nothing more captivating or will make you will come alive when you get to experience that and say, Lord, thank you that you are shedding off every soulish dream, everything that has made me bored and complacent. I am so ready to run through your field of dreams. I want to be able to experience that, Lord, because all I want is to embrace your dream inside of my heart. I want to be able to see it, to behold it, to celebrate it. And to follow your lead, to see that dream come into fulfillment. To glorify your name. Woo! So I'm believing even tonight, Lord, those that have not yet experienced it, whether you encounter them in a dream at night or in a vision or open vision, Lord, I thank you that they will be able to uh, experience your field of dreams, how their hearts will be captivated. Oh, it's a harvest field. It's a harvest field. And I just thank you, Lord, that every dry bone is going to be saturated with the outpouring of your rain from heaven as they begin to partake of and experience woo, with their spiritual senses your field of dreams. <sighs> that God just hands it to you and says, hey, you that's that dream right there, I want you to run through my field of dreams. And guess what? You see that over there? Yeah, that dream in my heart. I'm, I'm, I put that in your heart. I put that in your heart. And now I'm going to wake it up. I'm going to wake it up. I'm going to wake it up. Because you drank from my cup. You're at, God said, I'm going to wake it up. Because you drank from my cup. Oh, look, when Jesus said, Father, if this cup could depart from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, I want you guys to hear that again. That's so holy. An encounter with the Father saying to you, hey, I want you to see that dream. I want you to, to see it and behold it in my presence because guess what? I'm going to wake that dream up. Woo! Inside your heart, I'm going to wake that dream up. I'm going to wake my dream up because you drank from my cup. We don't realize whoo, what is birthed 
from the glory of God after we drink from that cup of long suffering. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm going to do this. Thank you Jesus. Okay. Thank you Jesus. All right. So now I'm going to talk about what the Lord said because this is this is awesome. Okay. The Lord was talking to me about the former and the latter rain. And I told you a little bit in the beginning of this broadcast, okay, where the Lord talks about there's a light rain and then in the spring there's a heavy rain. That's why they call it spring. Because the spring season is when everything emerges from underneath the ground that was dormant. It wakes up and it begins to bud and it begins to blossom. But why does that happen? Because there's such a heavy rain that comes in spring because it's springtime. Okay? So what God is saying is this. There's a heavy outpouring of his spirit that is coming upon his remnant. And that heavy rain is forcing what's become mature on the inside to break out of the shell. So let me say this again. In the springtime when that heavy rain comes, that seed begins to swell because of all that water and the pressure that comes from the downpour. And all of a sudden, that swelling or it gets so inflamed that it will burst. And so it'll break and that shell will crack open and shed off because of the radical embryo on the inside of it. And so it'll take root and then it'll rise. The life, the divine intelligence, what God put in that seed, boom, it begins to rise because of that heavy rain. And what the Lord said is, what happens? Have you guys experienced this before? When there's a downpour and the very next day or the, the in, within two days, you look at your yard and that grass is so tall and I mean you're like my god it grows so tall and so the revelation of that is when God sends a heavy outpouring when there's such a great outpouring of his spirit that comes it forces wild growth so when God sends such an outpouring of that latter rain it forces do you hear me there ain't god's not asking permission he's not asking your permission the seed that has that life in it man when that rain hits it it swells it breaks open and then takes root and then boom breaks out of the ground no God doesn't ask that seed permission. That thing automatically begins to grow. So God is saying, Woo! All the things that are shedding out of our lives that's dead. Woo! God is saying, This shedding process is going to force some wild growth and expansion there's gonna be some serious growth that takes place because of the outpouring of the holy spirit so be excited about that we want things to flourish in our lives but they are surely not gonna flourish without the outpouring of the holy spirit no they're not they are not. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Lord. That is so important. 
That is so important that we understand that. We need such a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We really want to see things flourish and grow. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I saw a glorious wedding or a glorious shedding for a new wedding. A true transfiguration that transcends time. A glorious embrace of our spirit abiding in the vine. I heard trading places that the soul will no longer govern from trauma. The spirit will govern in abiding. Because there is a place that the Holy Spirit is overshadowing us in this hour, in this age. Glory to God. He's the rock of ages. And there is such an overshadowing of the Holy Spirit coming upon the bride like never before. That's why there is an intense wild shedding happening. In our personal lives, corporately in the church, in the nations. Because there's such a weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit coming. And thank you, Lord. I heard this before, so I'm going to say it. That weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. And I can't remember the, the man or woman of God that said this. But they said, in the, in the word in Genesis, when, when God talks about how the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was at the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord was hovering or brooding over the waters. What they said that was a powerful revelation was, do you know what it meant for the Holy Spirit to hover or brood? It was like a mother eagle that begins to flutter her wings. And it, it, it's so intense that it's literally causing the, the weaning out of the nest to force the eaglets to begin to fly. So there's such a power. It's, it's a violent shaking, okay? It's like a violent shaking, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit that is restoring divine order. Oh my God. Okay. So when God is talking about, right, this incredible shedding that we're experiencing because of this Weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Just saying it, my God. A weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit like we've never experienced before. And I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it. And some of you, if you are, I want you to, I want you to re respond in the comments. Because when God talks about that, that weighty overshadowing, okay? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So this overshadowing of the Holy Spirit that's coming upon the earth. Woo! Mm. This weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit that's coming upon the earth for a great rebirth. And how we've heard reset, right? It's so serious because it is like the mother eagle, right? The Holy Spirit, the one is the comforter, the nurturer. And we've often heard it's like almost like a, a mothering, mothering uh, uh, character of a mother, the role of a mother. So, but this right here is like, I've got a greatly overshadow and my overshadowing is bringing a great shaking and I'm shaking everything that's out of order. So what happens? What happens is 
when the Holy Spirit begins to greatly overshadow and there's that hovering or that brooding, it's a violent, sh it's an intense shaking. That's everything that needs to be shed that's dead. There are systems that are just dead. Dead. So where the Holy Spirit is, is overshadowing the earth, like that mother eagle that overshadows her nest and begins to force her eaglets out of that nest. Like, it's time to fly. You're not going to be nestled in here. There's something powerful that's taking place. And so that's why the Lord said, many are coming out of the area where their soul has been governing out of trauma and wrong systems to where now... The way the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, you're going to learn how to move in the Spirit and govern where your spirit is abiding in Christ like never before. It's going to be so wild. It's going to be so amazing. And, and through this incredible shedding that we're experiencing from the Holy Spirit, it's going to cause us to renew our vows like a husband and wife, like a bride and a bridegroom. Renewing our vow to truly bow before His crown and embrace what is crowning for all creation, for all creation, what is crowning for all creation from the womb of His wonder. This deep shedding is going to cause us to absolutely renew our vow. God said he's getting rid of the crutches and training wheels. I had that broadcast last year towards the end of the year. Okay, those things that seemed like a help, okay, was really a hindrance to your growth and your expansion. And so God is going to give great discernment, okay, recognizing, okay, is this my help cometh from the Lord? My help cometh from the Lord. And so God, thank you, Jesus. You're going to be on one accord with the Spirit of the Lord, discerning your help that comes from on high versus something that looks like help, but it's actually a hindrance, and it's sent by the enemy to keep you in your comfort zone so that you cannot grow and expand. Right? Your faith, muscles, your faith muscles can't grow when somebody is a crutch. So God knows, right? So that's what we say. I got to get rid of the crutches and the training wheels. They're not helping you. I've experienced that where God will say, I don't want you to ask nobody nothing. You're going to completely rely on me and be dependent on me because this comes but by my spirit. Your provision is going to come by my spirit. These things are going to come by my spirit. I'm getting all the glory in your life. And so there are times, sometimes not everybody is called to that area, right? But sometimes God will dry something up to train you in the supernatural, Let me say that again. God will dry something up. He'll, he'll, he'll cause it to be far removed from you. He'll make that thing shed out of your life. He'll say, you know what? Nope. That's going to, I'm, I'm removing that. I'm removing that. Because I want to train you to walk in the supernatural. I can feel that. Some of you, that's a word for you. So God said, 
there are those things that seem like help, even from people. God doesn't want things. Here we go. The Lord says, listen, he didn't, he didn't call us to be comfortable, but he did send us a comforter. He didn't say that life is going to be easy, right? So there are things that aren't supposed to be easy, but when, when we move in the spirit, it flows with ease. So he, he didn't, he didn't, we're not, we're not, we're not called to an easy life. No, things don't come easy. We got to, he's got to strengthen our spiritual muscles to live and move by the spirit. And when we are surrendered to moving and living by the spirit, they, they flow with ease, but it doesn't mean God makes things easy. Okay. Makes sense. That's not the remnant. We got boots on the ground, okay? We experience such a, a beautiful outpouring of the Spirit. We're, when we're in the Spirit, things flow with ease. Despite, not the, we don't have the easy life. We're not supposed to. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to train, is to, is number one, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to do what? Is to bring the ministry of reconciliation where what? The soul of man comes into covenant, comes back into oneness with what? The creator of all creation. The soul of man comes back into oneness and harmony with his creator, Jesus Christ. And so the ministry of the Holy Spirit is we have to unlearn so many things. That's the shedding. We have to unlearn so many systems and paradigms and oh my God, to get us to experience the freedom of living by the Spirit. That is why the Lord said, I didn't, I didn't call you to live a comfortable life, but I did send you a comforter. Because we only come alive, my God, when we encounter the Spirit of God moving in a brand new way in our lives. That we were, our hearts were meant to live in the spontaneous flow of the Holy Spirit. That's why God loves to do things the way he does. And I'm talking about the remnant of God. So there is a great shedding that's taking place where God speaks about this when he said a true transfiguration that transcends time. Transfiguration, a complete change or form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. What? Transfiguration, a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. Transcending time is to be or go beyond the range or limits of. Rise above, excel, trump, surpass. Come on, the shedding that's happening in this season of our lives is going to cause us to transcend time. Whew! Let me say that again. The wild shedding that's happening right now in our lives that is so holy, that is so liberating, that is so captivating by the Holy Spirit is going to cause us to transcend time. Look, 
Transcend time means to cross the limits of the earthly life, to traveling to eternity. We operate from eternal realms of the glory of God. We go from glory to glory. This new nakedness, and I'm going to dive into that in just a few moments. But the shedding that's happening, it is holy. The shedding is captivating. My God, the shedding is liberating. I had to repeat that because it literally means to cross the limits of the earthly life. That's why the Lord says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony because we're saying, hey, this was supernatural. This came straight from heaven. This came straight from heaven where my spirit is seated in heavenly places. This transcended time. This didn't come out of any system in this earthly fallen world. And see, that's what's happening. Okay, I'm about, okay, thank you, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you this, this picture because I want you to see this and, and I want you to literally see what the Holy Spirit's saying to you. We are coming. It is a massive shedding, a massive molting happening. We are coming out of such a unbelievable attachment to a fallen world. We are coming out of being enslaved to time that operates out of a system from a fallen world. Oh, Jesus. Let me say it again. This wild shedding that is happening is so holy and so liberating to the body of Christ because you are coming out of where your soul has been attached, enslaved, enslaved to a system or systems where time is attached to a fallen system. Woo! Come on, look, look, look. You're going to operate out of the eternal realm of his glory. We're, we're meant to operate out of eternity. What comes that is eternal? What is from heaven? Fa our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh my God, the operating system. Woo! Some of you, I mean, the Holy Spirit is shedding the, the, the operating system. That I'm telling you, there's something so amazing that's happening. So again, where you have been enslaved to a system called time. Do I say this, Lord? Do I say this, Lord? Do I say this, Lord? Ooh. I'm not going to go deep in this, okay? But I'm going to tell you this. We are coming out of a speed limit in an earthly realm attached to the fallen world and the systems with time. We are coming out of a speed limit to a light speed. One of the things the Lord said to me a few months ago, I'll never forget it. Oh, my God. I began to talk to the Lord because I could see this. I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm breaking out of every limitation. And I, I asked God this. I said, I said, Lord, man, you know, there's always a speed limit. There's always a speed limit, right? In this earthly realm. And I said, God, I thank you that you're going to remove every limitation off of me that I put on myself because of how I've been attached 
to certain things that I that I that I'm getting liberated from. I don't want my I don't want any part of my being to be enslaved to a fallen system. And so as I was talking to the Lord, I heard this as clear as day. I heard the Holy Spirit say to me so loud and he spelled the words out in front of me in all capital letters and it said light years. Light years. Light years. Okay. Let me say this. Let me say this. Woo! Some of you guys, I'm telling you, there's going to be such a liberty and a healing that comes because of every place that you were beaten down and beaten up by the enemy where your mind, your mindset was attached to, and I keep saying it, enslaved to time in the earth realm age in the earth realm and so when the lord said to me he said light years okay light years all of a sudden i'm i'm, I'm looking it up and it says light is not measured by time Light is measured by distance. And they they made this statement, and it was like scientists. And it I, I think my whole body almost just exploded when I when I heard this. I said, Oh God. They said that one light year is equivalent to it would equal in the earth realm like 39,000 years. One light year, because light is measured by distance, right? Sound, it's not measured by time. So, oh my God. Woo! I, I'm not going to go deep into this, but I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right, right now. So many are getting ready to come out of the enslavement where your mind, your, your soul has been attached to to time in the earth realm. Woo! Okay. So, I, Holy Spirit, you just, I just want to flow with you, but I'm just going to tell you right now, the wild shedding that's happening, it, it's, it's just so profound. So profound. And that gravitational pull where the enemy wanted to like pull so many of us down, right? Being attached to time in this fallen world, in the earth realm. The, the way that God says, I'm going to restore the years. I'm going to restore the years. And he says, light with my light years. With my light years. It's so holy and so, so powerful. But I'm not going to go into all that right now i'm just going to tell you that the transfiguration that transcends time Whew. thank you jesus I can't get out of that one scripture from Ecclesiastes 3.11. God placed eternity in the heart of man. God placed eternity in the heart of man. This is why the Lord says you have to give me your heart. Your heart. Worship me in spirit and in truth from your heart. Because how we travel, how we move with the Holy Spirit, it transcends time. What's about to happen? Whoo! What's about to happen in our lives is, is, is going to be so wild. It's just going to be so wild.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. At the same time, we're experiencing all this shedding. One of the most captivating things is the way that the Lord said, well, not only are many things shedding off of my people, okay, but I am shedding my light. I am shedding my light. I am shedding, look, when, you know that statement that says, we need to shed some light on that situation, right? When you shed light on something, you gain knowledge, you discover, right? So the Lord says that through this shedding process where so many things are falling away, okay? Falling away. What's amazing is how the Lord is going to shed his light upon us. And what we're going to discover. Oh my God. It, there's just It's just so captivating, magnificent, majestic, sacred. Whew. And there are things the Lord says, and he, and he said it to me this way. And he said, you know, daughter, I'm going to shed my light in some areas, right, where we're not aware of something or we're not conscious of something that actually needs to be cleaned up, that needs to be cleaned up. And it was this moment that, and I remember it because the the sunlight was shining on my windows. It was like the sun rays were piercing on my windows. And normally when they don't, my windows look clean. But my God, when the sunlight hits it, you see all these smudges and residue on the window and just looked awful. It looked awful. And so there's areas that through his love, He's going to shine his light. He's going to shed his light on some areas in our lives. And it's not condemning. It's actually liberating and healing. But he's saying, hey, you missed a spot. Okay, some of the things that you, you don't recognize, right? I'm coming for a bride with no spot or wrinkle. So I'm going to shine my light in some areas that need a deep, cleaning or cleansing so praise God for that because we all need it we all need it all right Lord I'm gonna go here thank you Jesus then the Lord said going back to the new wedding the shedding that's bringing the new wedding, right? Like renewing our vows. After so many years of marriage and then you renew your vows. Okay, this is a this is this is one that this is one that the Lord said is it's kind of like it's a it's a convicting word from the Lord for all of us. But again, it's just exposing the tactics of the enemy in the church. And I'm going to talk about this. Okay? Our focus in the body of Christ has been more on waiting on the promises of God or wanting to find the formula to receive what God promised us instead of focusing on what we promised God. I sat in the presence of the Lord and I began to weep because I sat there and I was like Lord this is what I notice this is what I hear so much it's like on repeat it's so repetitive it's like a 
It's like this non-stop in the church. And I bless the church, but I'm telling you what is shedding off of the bride, what is shedding off of the bride, eh, barabasataye, is this. And it's been a tactic of the enemy. It has absolutely been a tactic of the enemy. Wanting to create platforms and create systems that get you to only focus on waiting on a promise from God, wanting to find what's the formula so I can get this harvest, so I can get this. And that's been something... And that's why the Lord said it's like a it's like a convicting word because because truth be told the truth is when we respond to the Lord in the way that we serve him we actually have greater fulfillment in serving the Lord than in the moment that God brings fulfillment to a promise I, I, I'm going to say that again because this was so. That's where the Lord said he's going to get rid of the, the snake oil in the church. He's going to get rid of the nonsense. He's going to get rid of the deception. He's going to get rid of the things that are like constantly regurgitated like a cow. Cows do that, right? They eat the grass and they chew it and then they... Uh, digest it and then they they regurgitate it comes right back up and they chew it again and it's it's something that's re constantly and what I've been seeing so much on platforms non-stop is constantly only wanting to teach you about okay what I have to do to get my promise from God instead of the joy of focusing on doing what I promised God okay Vows are not one-sided. So why is the majority of the messages we hear so much on prophetic words to just be in receiving mode for what God will deliver to us and not on what we will deliver to God? A lot of that is shedding. See, and this is one of the reasons why the Lord said, my birthing rooms are being restored in my body. See, because when the birthing rooms are being restored, like tongues of fire, right? The church was birthed with tongues of fire. And when we embrace that and we partner with, the Spirit of God and, and that intercession that's needed for thy kingdom to come and thy will and God's will to be done, there's an overwhelming fulfillment and joy in serving the Lord and doing what we promised than the actual moment that God, because God's bringing fulfillment to promises, but what is going to shock so many people is when that fulfillment comes, and yes, you're going to have joy, and you're going to be, but you will realize that the greatest fulfillment that brings us the greatest joy is serving the Lord. The journey 
is all about an invitation to encounter the Lord and to, to discover his way and his, his nature and his heart. And so God takes us on that journey and saying, hey, I promised you something. But what's been happening in the church is not good. Not good. Because if so many of us just want to gather because we just want to hear something so that we can have fulfillment to something that God promised us, that's not a marriage. That's not a marriage. That's not a covenant. So God is bringing that conviction. And that's why the Lord said this shedding is for a new wedding, is renewing our wedding vows, is coming into such a beautiful place with the Lord, actually brings healing and again, pulls you out of an unnecessary battlefield. God's nature is giving, right? He, he finds joy in giving. So if we're created in his image and his likeness, our greatest fulfillment and our joy is in what we give to others, how we serve others. Everything else is honestly, it's, it's a blessing and a gift. And I'm, I'm telling you that he's removing this, this, what do you call that, Lord? Like, yeah, like that depression, like that heaviness. And the enemy caused a lot of it because of how he was whispering in people's ears to constantly want to get people to focus on what I got to do to get what God promised me. Instead of falling in love with Jesus, instead of telling the truth, that our fulfillment is only found in worshiping him. Whoo, Jesus. Thank you, God. All right, where do you want to go, Holy Spirit? I can just I can just see this like coming out of that coming coming out of that that's that shedding Woo! almost like like a culture like this was culturized in the church to, to, to get you to your, your mindset think I really, you know, constantly focusing on, oh my God, I just want the promise. I want the promise, what God promised, what God promised. It's like, you know, when you have a promise ring, you have a promise ring, right? I'm seeing that because I know what a promise ring is. It's when when someone talks about right, they're gonna they're gonna come into a, a like a like a courtship, and there's a, a promise ring for a, a marriage and a covenant. But what I'm seeing is, oh my God, it's almost like so many that are wearing a, a promise ring, saying I'm only gonna 
I'm only in a marriage with you because of what you promised. Like, all about what you promised. I only want to, I only want to pursue you because of what you're going to give me. A promise ring. Right? No. And, and I'm, whoo, God. Marriage, marriage is not about everything that you get out of your spouse. They made it, oh, I'm only in this covenant because I'm going to get that. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this inheritance. I'm going to get this. Covenant is about the heart. Covenant is about the heart. Oh my God. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just seeing stuff right now. Just coming, flowing right now what I'm seeing. And it almost, it just like, almost like breaks my heart. Like saying, oh wow, the ring is just a promise ring. I'm just, I'm, I'm only, I'm only, per, I'm only pursuing you because there, you, there's just this promise and I'm after it. I'm after the promise. I'm not after your heart, God. So I guess what I want to say is all the teachings, all those formulas that have been served on the front lines. The ones that got enticed by Satan. To release all these formulas to the people of God. To say, I'm all, I, I only want to serve you because I'm all I want to get is whatever you promise. I, I'm after the promise, not after your heart. That's that. Oh. So see, that's where the Lord is shining his light. Shining his light. You know, that's why I think too, where Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. Oh, I did this in your name. I did this in your name. Are you, are you, are you in love with me? Are you, are you, in, are you, is this marriage about my heart or just about what I, what I got? Like, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Well, so there is definitely this, this, this shedding, this stripping. I mean, I'm telling you, they're, they're like shedding away all these doggone formulas that a lot of these leaders have served you and it's just caused confusion and pain and unnecessary battlefields. Oh my God, I just praise God, I praise God. So there is a... There is a sweet conviction. There's a sweet conviction that's coming by the Holy Spirit and that sweet conviction is to really examine our hearts. Are we pursuing God because we're in love with Him and spending time with Him? Or are we just doing it because we're focused on what we can get out of Him? That word breakthrough harvest, breakthrough harvest, all the time. There's nothing more incredible than just to sit in his presence, to soak up his love, just being with him. That is more fulfilling than a sudden breakthrough or harvest. He is the harvest. Jesus is the harvest.
Everything else is just... Everything else... Materialistic. Everything else holds no value. It really, it holds no value. So this shedding that is happening, this deep shedding, this wild shedding that is happening, is removing all those things that have caused you to, to, to pursue anything or anything outside of the, literally the heart of God. Okay. Oh. So it's like seeing the bride renewing her vows. It's like, I am so sorry that all this was just in the way, this nonsense. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, for revealing all these things that were just in the way, causing decay. Let me say that again. It's like the bride saying, thank you, Lord, for revealing, shedding your light on everything that has been in the way that has been causing decay and keeping me from going to the deepest places in your heart. Where my fulfillment is My fulfillment is in your heart. My harvest comes from your heart. Everything else fades away. Everything else fades away. Everything else is burned up in the fire. Okay. And the Lord said, the Lord said this statement, and he talked about, he's talking about the new wine, right? Like the new wine skin. And he said, the new wine can only flow through our new nakedness. The new wine is only going to flow through our new nakedness. So there's a place in us. I mean, we're, we're in the examination room, but it's good. But we're in the examination room with the bridegroom. What the Lord is turning on the light, he's shedding his light and saying, look at all this. All this is is in this is in this room, right? It's like he's showing you the things that are interfering with that intimacy, are in the way. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. There is so much here, and I'm just going to sit for a minute and just ask the Holy Spirit if I need to release this or just, just do it and just upload it for you guys because it's so much. But God is talking about in this nakedness, okay? 
in this this nakedness before him. He's revealing things. Number one, let me let me just say it this way. Okay. Oh, glory. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Let me just say this. All right. So naked means without clothes, right? Without clothes. It means bare, stripped, uncovered, disrobed, exposed, unprotected, open, vulnerable, weak. But it means this. In one's birthday suit. Okay? Naked means, in the dictionary, it, it literally says, in one's birthday suit. And we know that when someone says you're in your birthday suit, you're just butt naked. Completely naked. I had this vision, and it was actually joyful. And it was last year, the beginning of December, and I saw so many and I know I was included in that. We were literally splashing in the river in our bathing suit, but yet the Lord said, you're in your birthday suit. So I kind of got confused for a minute, and I had to kind of step back. And the Lord said, birthday suit, but yet we were all in bathing suits, okay? But then I got the understanding of it. To be naked before the Lord, right, is to be in your birthday suit. But God allowed me to see a bathing suit because it wasn't about the bathing suit. It was about the word bathing. And bathing means we are immersed. We are immersed. Wash by immersing one's body in the water. Soak, envelop in something. It means mantle. It means cover. It means impregnate. Immerse means baptize, purify, submerge. Involve someone deeply in a particular activity or interest. So in this new nakedness, woo, there's a deep emerging, like, it, like it's immersing and there's a this bathing, this soaking in the deep. And that, what we're soaking in, in that new nakedness, we're going to see so many things that are birthed out of the heavenly realms because of, again, that incredible new nakedness before the Lord. And it's going to be so amazing. I'm telling you, it's through that weighty overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Glory to God. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit because there's so much in this. When God was talking about all the shedding that we're going through, right? All the shedding. We shed what's dead. He wanted me to look into the shedding of dead skin, how we shed the dead cells, right? Um, and that's that dead skin, those dead cells that we shed. 
and it says it's called I can't even say it. it's D E S Q U A M A T I O N Desquamation I guess it's called it there's it's a funny name and it's a Latin term okay it says when the outermost layer of tissue such as the skin is shed the name desquamate means in Latin to scrape the scales off a fish. To scrape the scales off a fish. Fish scales provide protection from predators. Okay? Fish scales provide protection from predators. So a spiritual revelation is that we are covered, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. He is our protector. But when we have a self-protection mindset, we actually imprison ourselves and project our pain that causes us to sin. So the Lord has to remove the scales to restore his covering. Okay. So as soon as I'm, I'm doing this research where the Holy Spirit's leading me, understanding how we shed our dead skin cells, it says this Latin term that means to scrape the scales off of a fish. And God says, I want you to understand this. And so fish scales means, again, it's a protection from predators. And God starts talking about the human nature. And I'm going to go into that in just a minute. But the revelation here that he just said, if we have a self-protection mindset... We actually imprison ourselves and project our pain that causes us to sin because our we harden, our heart becomes hardened. That's the self-protection. Okay, so the Lord has to remove the scales to restore his covering. Acts chapter 9 verse 18 says, Saul received receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit and spiritual sight. It says, and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. All right. Now you guys listen to this. This is something. Okay. So I'm giving you an understanding of what shedding of dead skin represents. Talks about like scraping off the scales. God says, look, this is like the word in the book of Acts that talks about removing the scales, right? What blinds us? We can't see clearly. Have We need eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so as, as I'm reading this, where it says, and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, God said, look up the word scales. It says, a flaky covering. A flaky covering covering that word flaky means unreliable falls apart undependable untrustworthy reckless fickle faithless unsound open to doubt weak shaky wrong I want to go in there again. Hold on. I want to go in there again because this is this is deep. Wait. What are you saying? Oh my God. Okay. So the shedding, the shedding where God talks about removing the scales, right? God is talking about flaky coverings what is not his covering god is shedding his light on these areas where the lord is saying listen i gotta remove the scales i gotta allow you to see the areas that you are not naked before me that you're not trusting me that you're not putting your faith in me and your hope in me as i am your only covering. And so the areas where there's been a lot of struggle and warfare, 
some a lot of stuff going on that's really been weighing heavy on you god is revealing he says i'm gonna reveal the scales which is the flaky covering on your life that is deep what and again he said what what let's look up what flaky mean this is powerful if we try to protect ourselves what a flaky covering unreliable falls apart undependable untrustworthy reckless fickle faithless unsound i hear the lord saying this for some people on here and on the replay god is saying I'm going to expose the flaky covering covering through ministries that are not releasing sound doctrine. Let me say it again. God is about to expose flaky covering. Flaky coverings in ministries that are not releasing sound doctrine. Because that's what he said. Flaky me a flaky cover means unsound wrong falls apart unsupported faithless untrustworthy there's a lot here so now we understand what it means when god talks about removing the scales from our eyes removing the scales from our eyes Okay, and then I want to say this. Thank you, Jesus. Another word for scale is tartar, like tartar buildup. A hard calcified deposit formed on teeth contributing to decay. And as soon as I read that, the Lord began to speak to me and he said, see the nature of the human body is to form a callus when things get rough to protect the skin from harm, like blisters or cuts or etc. So our human nature, the human nature of the soul of man is to harden our hearts to protect ourselves instead of trusting the spirit of the Lord. So, God is shedding his light. He's shedding his light on these areas. He wants to step in so that his divine nature can be in operation so that your human nature is not causing you to imprison yourself. And what is that caused by? It's caused by the spirit of fear. So the Lord is revealing all these areas that we have not been naked before him to fully receive his covering, his covering. Okay. I find that absolutely fascinating that God, you know, again, he reveals his nature through his nature, his creation. But at the same time, he's showing how the human body operates, right? And he's showing, he's saying, that automatically happens. Like, if there's any kind of hard pressure, right? Like, like when someone plays the guitar, right? When someone's constantly playing the guitar, they develop callus. There's a, their, 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 their tips of their fingers harden. Because that's the natural response. That's the human nature that says, I, so that there's not a wound or anything that can penetrate the skin. There's a hard shell. It's like a hard shell. So there's a hardening that happens to protect the body. It's the same way with our feet. You notice how that 
thick, that skin gets really thick and forms a, a callus. Jesus, Jesus. So again, the Lord is saying that he is revealing those areas where we've tried to cover ourselves. Okay? We've tried to cover ourselves. We've tried to we've tried to protect ourselves. And so there's places again that God says he's going to move and minister so that we can come into a new nakedness before him. And then there's all these scriptures and they're <clears throat> and they're very powerful. They're absolutely very powerful. And I think I'm going to stop there and end the broadcast with that crab so you guys can see it. I'm going to pull this up. Because God did say, a lot of us, we're coming out of our shells. We're coming out of our shells. Okay, Lord, where is the scriptures? Thank you, Lord. Okay. Naked means without clothes. So it's about our heavenly garments. We're covered in his blood, his divine nature, his glory. So here's the scriptures. I'm just going to read them off. You can type them out and I'll go to some of them because they're really powerful. And it's all about being clothed in the salvation of the Lord, being clothed in his strength, being clothed in his humility. How the Lord covers us, how he clothes us. It's so powerful. So, okay. Psalm 132, 16. And let me see if I can do it this way. Okay, 132.16. Yeah. This scripture says, I will also clothe her priest with salvation and her godly ones will sing aloud for joy. So in this scripture, it talks about being clothed with salvation, the salvation of the Lord. Isaiah 61.10. Okay, Isaiah 61.10. And y'all forgive me, I'm, I'm a little tired. I've had a really busy day. So I'm not as bubbly as I usually am. But I'm going to get this out. Okay. Isaiah 61.10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. So here's scriptures that talk about, being, that means covered in the blood, covered in the divine nature of the Lord, covered in in the glory of the Lord, the presence of God, the anointing of the Lord. Okay. Psalm 30 verse 11. So these are all scriptures about being clothed by the Lord. Psalm 30 11 through verse 12 says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pull up this translation. Okay, yeah. So this talks about being, this talks about the shedding of sackcloth, right? And being clothed 
with gladness, the joy of the Lord that covers us, the peace of God that covers us, the love of God that covers us, his spirit of truth that covers us. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 61, 3. And provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise. Again, clothed are heavenly garments. And I think it's important to meditate on this. Saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for shedding off everything. like The sackcloth, shedding everything that I'm not to be covered in. I thank you, Lord, that you clothe me. You clothe me. Woo! If you don't clothe me, I'm going to be naked. I'm going to be naked. Lord, you are my covering. You are my only covering. Woo, Jesus. Let me see this one. Revelation 19. Okay, let's see. First Peter five five. There we go. First Peter five five. We're gonna do that one. Oh Jesus, thank you, Lord. Okay, first Peter five five. We're gonna do the NIV. Is that it, Lord? NI okay, let's do New King James Version. New King James Version. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Wow. So this new nakedness to be clothed with humility. The very heart, the very nature, the very character of Christ. Humility is a weapon against the enemy. Humility is a strength, my God. Because the Lord says he will exalt those who humble themselves. I'll exalt those who are clothed in my humility. I'll promote those who are clothed in my humility. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wow. I love, I love Romans 13, 12. I love Romans 13, 12. Thank you, Jesus. It says, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light, clothed in his light. Clothed in his light. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness. My goodness. We are clothed. We are armor. It's the armor. His light is our armor. Clothed in his light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm going to go to Galatians 3.27. There's so many. I want to go to every one of them. But Galatians 3.27. see here who this says okay let me go to New King James version here it says for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ right that's the whole that's understand being clothed in his light his blood is our covering which means his divine nature you could go so deep into that the blood of Jesus covers us right the blood he covers us so putting on Christ is the power of his blood and his in his blood which means his divine nature and in his divine nature is his divine intelligence his divine intelligence my god what we experience when we are fully covered whoo we are fully covered in his blood that's his light his divine nature is divine intelligence. Woo! Clothed. So see what I believe even 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 tonight in this this broadcast and this teaching, revelatory things that God is doing is that it awakens a deeper hunger. Saying, "Lord, thank you for giving me this deep awareness." And and waking me up to the areas that I that there's some flaky coverings in my life or maybe the areas that I've tried to cover myself I I I embrace I embrace the stripping I embrace the way that you are going to cause me to be completely naked to experience the the freedom and the liberty and the restoration and the prosperity that comes when I am fully covered by you that you are my only covering and that you are the only one that will clothe me that is so powerful and even when I sit here it's like Lord, thank you. Thank you for bringing all of us into this new nakedness. That we become aware. You got too many leaders. Too many leaders in the church that tell you they're your covering. No. No. I'm sorry. I don't care if I get persecuted. They are not your covering. They are spiritual reinforcement like a battle buddy right uh, uh, but they are not your covering oh god they didn't get brutally beaten they didn't get brutally murdered they didn't shed their blood no it is only the light of christ it is his divine nature is divine intelligence man is blood blood life is in the blood Woo! Jesus life is in the blood my blood does not cover you I think somebody's getting set free right now I don't know if you can be bold and courageous and just say it okay that right there needs to be said more than ever before if I get cut and I bleed, my blood ain't covering you. My blood does not cover a multitude of your sins. My blood does not heal you. Oh, Jesus. Therefore, I am not your covering. I am a prophetic voice. I have the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. And he moves and he disciples through me. Absolutely. 
but my purpose is to make sure that everything that's ever covered you is stripped and that you become so naked before the Lord that you experience what it means to be fully covered by the Lord. Fully covered, clothed, clothed in his strength. Clothed in his woo, joy and his love. Woo, clothed in his what? Divine intelligence, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. So I don't I don't know who needed to hear that. Jesus. No minister is your covering that is a language of a culturized church that is a system in the church they are not your covering they are yes pastors preachers teachers evangelists prophets and apostles they're not your co the blood so important that's why there's so much spiritual abuse in the church and God and the Lord is like so many of you are gonna feel the freedom of that thank you Jesus you are my covering you bring people that you've mantled for, with your ministry to to definitely edify to build me up to help to help get me in shape right to encourage me there's a lot that we are mantled to do, and it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but we are not your covering. So whoever needed that, praise God for your freedom and liberty, because only the blood of Jesus Christ is your covering. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. I, I want to go into this. Thank you, Lord. This is a word for some of you. It is. And I, and I want to say it because remember the Lord said, there's such a shedding, and this is where I'm going to show the crab. This is where I'm going to show the crab. All right, Lord. Those of you, right, that have been single You've been single for years and years and years and years and years. That, you're, you're about to shed that single life style. You're about to shed that because God has promised you a marriage. God has promised you a kingdom marriage. And God is moving. And so there, there's like, there's a shedding that's t taking place. Because of the way that God is really preparing your heart and ministering your, to your heart. Because you know what it means to have a true blood covenant with the Lord. But he's making your heart ready to begin to have this unbelievable change to adapt and adjust to having an actual partner. To having an actual companion. Having an actual marriage with you know the one that God has chosen for you and so you're going to shed that single lifestyle okay and what I heard was shedding the single silhouette shedding the single silhouette shedding the residue of the painful journey really longing for that companionship and that relationship and all the while you've you've experienced a oneness and 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 this harmony with the heart of God and learning how to hear the Holy Spirit and walk with the Spirit of God and you've not been single-minded anymore see God removed that single-mindedness to come into covenant a blood covenant marriage but just Everything you've experienced is now about to, all that you've walked through in, in being single, right, in the earth, like without a partner, 
You're about to shed all that. And it's incredible what God is doing in preparing your heart for that. It's going to be, it's almost like shocking. It's going to be like shocking in a sense of getting you ready for that beautiful new adventure with Jesus, with that partner, right? That spouse that he's always had preserved for you. Glory to God. So life as you have known it, you're shedding life as you've known it. It's, it's, it's amazing what, what's about to happen. And the Lord said, ha, the Lord said, Pearls of great price are coming out of the shell, coming out of hiding. Eagles are still molting for a new mantling. So there's a, the, all this shedding is another word for molting for a new mantling that's coming. And then the Lord said, <laughs> he said, we are literally coming out of our skin or we are literally, we are literally jumping out of our skin, which means suddenly and extremely shocked or surprised by something unexpected. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Because it, it's been a long night for me, you guys. But I, I praise God the Lord's helped me to do this tonight. To get through this. And I apologize. Like I said, I'm just, I know I've been really tired. But I thank you, Jesus, for helping me get this message out. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do this real quick, guys. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do this because I want you to see it. All right. Let me fix this real quick. I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Let me put on. Is it Echo? No, no. I think it, yeah, I think it is Echo. Okay, I hope this works. I hope this works. Okay, share screen, share screen, <laughs> share screen. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see this. All right. Okay, can I do it this way, Lord? All right, hold on. Wait, let me see if I can. Okay, here we go, guys. Look. Okay, I want you guys to see what God is talking about with this shedding. Coming out of the shell. Coming out of, look it. This is so powerful. So this is this is a king, is it called a king crab? Okay, hold on, let me see. Watch this thing. Literally come out of its entire shell. This is wild. Look at this is us coming out of all the fallen systems, all the man-made systems, coming out of every false covering. Woo! Look at this. I just want you guys to see this. God. And then the Lord goes, he goes, hey, see? When you experience that wild shed, you won't be crabby. <laughs> we won't be crabby. We won't be crabby when we when we experience this full shedding. Look at that. <laughs> Do you see that? 
Look at how that crab completely came out of its shell. You guys want to see that again? Hold on, let me do it again. Wait. Hold on, I can do it again. Wait, so you guys can see this. Okay, it's a real king crab. Molting is the process of shedding the old shell so a crab can grow. Look at that. Shedding the old shell for growth. You know, watch this thing. Absorbing seawater makes the crab swell, causing its old shell to crack along a special seam. <laughs> Look at that. This is what it's like spiritually. This is what it's like spiritually coming out. Look at that. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is of this world. It's like, it's like, look at the greatness of God is beckoning you to come, to advance, to expand. So we, we're coming out of life as we've known it. I didn't know that either, Penny. Look at that. Look at this, man. <laughs> the wild shed. Casting off everything that is dead. That's right, Crystal, shedding the old wine skin. I mean, look at that, man. Is that not wild? He, he I mean, look, he came completely out of his shell, skin. He came completely out of his <laughs> That, it's the rebirth. It's the rebirth. It's the rebirth. It's the reset. There it is, guys. Okay. Wait, let me see if I can fix this. All right. There it is. There it is. So I just wanted you to see that because as I was talking about the shedding and the, and the Lord said it's a wild shed. So we had to see the crab. Okay. Because God said this. All right. Let me say this this way too. And, and, and then I'm going to end it. All right. So here we go. Let's let me pull this up. Where are we at, Holy Spirit? Because there's so many things right here. Okay. All right. Where are we? Holy, 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 holy. I knew there was something on here that I was going to say, and I don't, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay, I know now. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let me pull it up. Here it is. Here it is. All right, guys, give me just a second. I'm going to find it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord. All right. So in that word nakedness, another word for nakedness is unveiled, okay? Unveiled. And it means to show or announce publicly for the first time. To show or announce publicly for the first time. To display, to launch, to introduce. And so some of you who have really been embracing, right? You've been embracing this shedding season, 
really obeying the Lord in those things that he's been saying to let go, to cast off, right? And so the Lord is talking about in this new nakedness, what's what he's going to unveil and how he's going to display his glory and the beauty, the beautiful work of his, his spirit within you. And also in this new nakedness, there are absolutely things that are going to go for launch. There are the areas that God is going to launch you out because the capacity of greatness within you can no longer be confined. Okay. I want to say it this way. The capacity of God's greatness within you can no longer be confined where you've been refined in the fire. Oh, yes, Lord. Let me say that one more time. The capacity of God's greatness within you can no longer be confined where you've been refined in the fire by the spirit of the Lord. So in this place of, of this new nakedness, there's going to be such a beautiful unveiling. And what God is going to unveil and present to you to show you, to announce to you, to put on display for you, to embrace. And again, there are things that, there are places God is ready to launch you out into the deep. And so that's the beauty of what comes out of that new nakedness before the Lord. Okay? So you guys... You know, like I said, there was a lot here and I, I just, I feel like, again, I just, I just, I just felt really tired and exhausted today. And again, I apologize, but I pray that you were blessed by the things that God wanted me to say concerning this wild shed and go back into the beginning as well, because where I really go and break some things down. Um, but what I'm going to do, even while I'm gone with my family, when I have some time, I want to write down some bullet points. Okay. Some bullet points. And then I'm going to put those out on a short video because there were some things that God was really highlighting here that are so important. And those are things that are shedding off of you that have exhausted you. Okay. And that is important. So but again, I just, I feel like I've been kind of, I feel like I've been long winded tonight. That's what I want to say. I feel like I've been long winded, but again, I pray you guys were richly blessed and that, um, that the Holy spirit just begins to stir a, a, a joy and an excitement in your heart because of the winds of change that are blowing, that are, that are, they're here now. The winds of change are here now. And because of the winds of change that have come, that there's this excitement. It's like leaping, like the baby that leaped in the womb in Elizabeth when Mary stood before her. It's like knowing this is destiny. Woo! This is destiny. Okay? So you, you can feel like I heard the Lord say, you can hear the sound, the voice of destiny beckoning you. The alarm has gone off. And when the alarm goes off, we wake up. So we can hear the voice of destiny coming out of the throne room, beckoning us, the greatness of God, stoking the fire in us saying, Hey, no, you can't be confined. You can't be confined. This is time to, to move forward and advance. So there's, there, it's just, a, you can feel the beckoning of the voice of destiny. What's on your destiny scrolls? And, and, and that's what I'm telling you. There's excitement, but just bracing ourselves, bracing ourselves for the, the, the shaking that's happening in the shedding process. Cause sometimes it can be scary, right? Cause sometimes God, things happen suddenly. And some things that we experience in the presence of God is shocking. And we, <laughs> what? like stepping into something totally new that we've not experienced before or things that we have to unlearn to go, wow, that wasn't truth. That wasn't truth. Oh my God. So sometimes that process, the shedding process isn't easy, 
but it's so incredibly liberating when we embrace it and we we begin to release such a such a such an adoration and a praise unto God because you can you imagine can you imagine what a slave feels and what happens to a slave when that slave is freed and so the places that our minds have been enslaved that our souls have been enslaved it, like to systems in the church and that i'm not talking i'm talking about systems in the church it's pretty it's pretty wild so I will be uh, talking more about this wild shedding and even about transcending time and things that God has really been speaking to me, especially about light years. That word is just, makes me makes my heart tremble every time I hear it. Light years. Whoo, Jesus. Okay, you guys, listen, I love you. God bless you. And um, I will keep you guys posted again. I'm going to be flying home to Oregon tomorrow around noon because i gotta be with my family uh since my grandma rosemary my beautiful grandma rosemary she went to heaven on february 7th and so i am flying out to be with my family and to spend that time with with my family and we have uh, my grandma's funeral on the 15th so i will be flying out tomorrow and then i'll be flying back the following sunday so i'll be back on the 19th and uh then i'll be ready We'll be ready to dive in for, for, to some amazing things with you guys here in the Cimarron tribe. So I look forward to it. I love you guys. God bless you. And I will see you next week. Glory to God.